Hi everyone, I'm uh, Mohammed from Palestine, I'm a data scientist. I will be presenting how to enhance the quality of education programs and workshops through data collection and data analysis, or in general, by using the techniques of data science. So the presentation goals, we have five goals. The first one, I'm gonna give you a comprehensive introduction about the field of data science. Then um, I'm gonna speak about why it's important to implement the techniques of data science in enhancing the quality of our programs. Um, in the third uh, goal, I'm gonna uh, highlight the key techniques that I personally use for collecting data. And in the fourth goal, I'm gonna present the most important and the most essential tools for data analysis. And to be honest with you, you might find the first four goals a bit boring, but the most exciting goal is number five. I'm gonna show real examples, how I collected data, analyzed them to improve the quality of the education programs that I ran. So, uh, data science. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, you heard about this term before. Data science is a rapidly evolving discipline. It's gaining prominence as an emerging sciences today and nowadays in, in this data revolution that we are living in in this century the successful organiza uh, organizations foundations institutions are those who collect data analyze them in order to modifi modify their services their their products and their everything so that they can satisfy the needs of their audience so it's actually an, not an easy discipline as um, I'm studying data science for two years and I'm still considering myself in the beginning. Anyone who gets into this science must have like statistical analysis, uh, background, programming, domain expertise, so that he or she can extract a meaningful insight from the data that she or he has. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna focus on is data as a collection of facts. Data is not numbers only, data can be numbers, can be texts, images, videos, and so on. It's not numbers only. So um, we, can, we can leverage the techniques of data science in order to improve the quality of our programs. Like for example, we can do customi customized training sessions based on participants' interests after we collect data about their interests. We can evaluate our educational resources effectiveness. And I think the people who, uh, who attended my lightning talk yesterday know exactly how I was successfully uh, uh, how I successfully evaluated the educational resources that I have in my program using the techniques of data science and we can like using the advanced disciplines of data science like AI and NLB, artificial intelligence and natural language processing in order to fasten the responses um, to our participants or our students. I'm gonna talk briefly right now about the methods that we use or I personally use. I think yani, these methods are too much enough. If you are a Wikipedian, you can use um, surveys, interviews, observations, or discussion groups, or you can find it in books under the name of focus groups. Um, this, these methods are so, so much enough if you are a Wikipedian and you want to collect data about your programs. So I'm gonna talk about each of these in detail right now. So first, starting with surveys, as you can see, um, if you like, if, for example, if you have 600 students in your program, in one of my, my, gram, my programs in Iraq, I had 600 students and it's really not possible to interview all of them. So I used surveys because they are, um, one of their pros is that they are so suitable for large amount of uh, participants and they can be done remotely and you can just open Google Forms and create your form and then send it to students and they can easily uh, be analyzed. But um, the data that you get may be, may be inaccurate and it's limited by survey questions and you might have low response from students. Like for example, um, I sent the survey for 1,000 students last year, only 70 of them participated and the 70 are, majority of them are females and the majority of these females are literature students. So um, the, the sample was biased and I didn't use this data. 
Okay, um, interviews, uh, you can use them to, to get in-depth exploration of research questions. Uh, you can interview your participant and ask him like or her about more and more uh, clarification so, so that you can get rich qualitative data. Interviews, um, interviews are mainly to get qualitative data, not quantitative data and numbers, but qualitative data so that you can identify uh, where are the problems and address and address them and for sure you are flexible and you can ask any question you want to your uh, to your interviewee so um, these these are their ones and regarding their cons they are time consuming so for example if you have 10 participants you need to interview them one by one by one by one like if if anyone take, like if if you spend 15 minutes with each of them, so you need 150 minutes, and this is actually time consuming. And um, uh, for sure, um, there is a potential for bias, depends on the an interviewer like uh, mindset, and findings may not be easily generalizable because you are asking persons, you are asking them for individual opinions. Observations, um, you can get real-time data um, and insights about the engagement and learning from students and you can evaluate the teaching or training uh, techniques and you are, you are in the workshop, you are in the session so that you can evaluate easily and assess the effectiveness of the training or teaching method and you can evaluate the engagement ratio of the students as you are between them and in, among them. But for sure, observer, um, that they have three cons, as you can see, uh, observer influence, difficulty capturing, and for sure they are time consuming. Finally, discussion groups, and I like this method too much, actually. Um, uh, as you can see, it's pros are facilitates group dynamics, um, varied pers you can get varied perspectives and varied opinions, and you can get so much qualitative data. And in the meantime, you can interview like, it's like a group interview. You can interview so many people in the meantime without interviewing them one by one. So um, it needs time, but it's time is less than interview, individual interviews. So as you can see, it's cons are, um, the, it requires skilled facilitation, dominant voices maybe overshadow others, difficult to ensure equal participation, and so on. But I can assure to you, if the one who's doing it is a skilled facilitator, he can tackle all these, he or she can tackle all these challenges. Um, great, so now I'm going to be talking about the most important data analysis tools. Um, first, I think all of you use, or at least most of you, use the spreadsheets, especially Excel and Google Sheets. I highlighted the Google Sheets because they are free. Um, they are open and free and anyone can use them. Uh, also, programming languages are important for data analysis, like these three are a bit advanced, but it would be great if you have this in your, um, in your skills. Programming languages, Python, I personally use Python and SQL to analyze data. Also, data visualization tools like Tableau and Power BI. Tableau is available for free, and it's a, a very important and very powerful visualization tool. And we have some advanced programs that require the skills of coding and programming like MATLAB. I personally use MATLAB, but if you are not a data scientist, you don't have to learn these three. Spreadsheets are more than enough if you are a Wikipedian. If you want to, con to conduct like advanced analysis, you can learn like programming languages. Okay, now coming to the most exciting part, um, which is I'm going to show you like real life examples of how I use data to enhance the quality of education programs. So I'm um, going to proceed with example number one. As you can see, the issue was engagement challenges and meetings and workshops. I think all of you uh, suffered from this issue um, in one of your training sessions or whatever. So we can resolve this issue easily by leveraging surveys to identify participants' interests. Remember that we are here to create an encyclopedia and we are here all of us are volunteers, so it's important to address the audience interests in order to uh, make them engaged with you. 
Um, so this is a group photo from, from one of the Wikidata sessions that I held in my university like four years ago. So I, I conducted a pre-survey to in order to like identify the audience interest. I want to know what, what do you want to learn from Wikidata? Why are you here? And all these things so that I can modify the content of the session to satisfy their needs. So it's really important to conduct a pre-survey and a post-survey to evaluate to what degree you were successful in addressing the challenges that uh, uh, your, your participants uh, wanted to know about. So um, in, in surveys, this is actually my rule, do not rely on friends and do not rely on enemies because friends will be so supportive even even if you did like um, even if your workshop was not that high quality they will be always supportive to you so don't take their opinions in consideration and your enemies whatever you did they will uh, they will give you like negative uh, opinions so do not consider their opinions <laughs> yeah I mean in surveys only <laughs> Okay, now proceeding with example number two, the problem was disengagement with the group messages among participants. So the, the resolution was employing automation. Automation is one of the most important field of data science in order to deliver personalized messages. As you can see, as you can see, this is the code that I wrote. Um, like you can see if the gender is male, send this message and consider to change the name. If the gender is female, um, send this message and consider to change the name. The messages are so similar as you can see, but there are some differences because the Arabic language, like the formation for males is different a bit than the formation of females. Like for example, here's takunu for males and takuni for females. And be careful to... Okay, um, as you can see here, it's takunu and here is takuni because there is different in Arabic language formation. So it's really important yani, to care about these tiny things because if you get caught while sending autom automated message, that would be so bad. Students will feel like, oh, it's an automated message and I will not uh, reply to it. It's like any other message. And, but if they felt like you are treating them uh, like you are treating them specially, yani you are caring about them, you are sending them personalized messages like, hi, how are you? How was, you, how was the session? Please tell me your feedback. They will care much more than if it was like a group message. Yeah. So proceeding with example number three, uh, most of my students told me that I talk too much during the sessions, so I needed to solve this problem. Uh, so the first thing I did, I, I sent them a survey, a post, uh, sorry, a pre-survey, so that I can identify, identify their interests, and I modified the content of the workshop so that I can only like address their interests and. I wanted like something to measure to what degree I was successful in decreasing my TTT, which is teaching, uh, trainer teaching time. So I implemented a good measure to assess um, the, solu this, uh, the solution, which is simply analyzing uh, chat, uh, Zoom chat um, uh, engagements. As you can see, this is the time frame. Oh. I think I scrolled up. This slide? No, no, this one. Okay, I can change. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, this is the time frame here. This is the time frame here. And this is like the engagements where students, like the messages that were sent on the chat. So as you can see, this is the chat frequency where one minute. And um, at the beginning, they were not sending anything because we are, they were just coming to the session. And after that, as you can see, as I asked them if my voice is clear, so they sent too much message. And after that, I, I explained something to them and I asked them if they have any questions. They asked the questions, as you can see. After that, I explained another thing and asked if you have any questions, look at here. I, they had too much questions. What does that mean? This means that the, um, the educational material here is not sufficient. I, I couldn't, I was not able to address all uh, their um, like challenges. 
So I need to modify this educational material to make sure that I at least answer most of their questions. Okay. Oh. So after that, I explained another thing. They asked questions. I explained. They asked. As you can see, they didn't ask too much questions here. Not like this, as you can see. So what does that mean? This means that I was able to address most of their questions in this, um, in this part of the lecture. And so on. So this analysis is so important to identify in which part you were successful and in which part you were unsuccessful. Getting too much questions is not, uh, or to getting too much engagements is not something good. Getting, getting like a lower number of uh, questions is also not something good because this is this might be an indication that they are not engaged with you. They are not they are not enjoying the lecture. Or they are not focusing with you at all. So you have to ensure that you are in the middle. Okay, as you can see, this is the table uh, translation uh, one, translation two, translation three. So I asked the students, what is the most uh, the most um, like session that you liked in our program? They all said. Uh, session number two and as you can see why did the, why did they like session number two they had the large number of engagements like engagements where attendance ratio was 19.6 this is a high, this is the highest number because in this um, in this lecture I didn't speak too much I allowed them to engage I asked I allowed them to ask so many questions and as you can see we had 75 students and the number of engagements the number of messages that they sent in the zoom chat was 1470 and if we divided this by this we can get 19.6 but as you can see in editing Wikipedia number one like I only received two 20, 204 questions and their editing quality this is if you remember the yesterday's um, lightning talk of mine this was actually too bad because their editing quality was too bad so I was not successful in delivering uh, what I need to deliver in this workshop so I can you can see here according to numbers according to according to data that we had problems in the editing Wikipedia sessions is that clear okay so Example number four, lack of enthusiasm among participants for translation or editing tasks. So um, for people who attended my session about BitScan yesterday, I think they can uh, uh, know better how I resolved this issue. I used BitScan to generate lists of articles that needs to be expanded or translated. And I utilize, utilize the mass views tool to sort these articles based on view count. As you can see, um, I had some uh, some students who are specialized in medicine, and they wanted uh, they wanted like medical articles to participate in. So I I extracted so many uh, so many of the medical articles, and I sorted them by daily average. And I gave the students this article to work, and I told them, if you worked in this article, you will be benefiting more than 1,000 individual per day. So he get, so he got excited, and he like contributed um, in high quality to this article. So numbers are so important to motivate and uh, like keep the um, students much engaged with your workshop and the editing tasks. And I think we all have this issue of repetitive questions and we, we, we always receive the same questions and we always answer the same answers. So we can, we can resolve this by using an advanced, uh, like advanced part of data science, which is, as I said in the first uh, slide, strong natural language processing and artificial intelligence capabilities. And I asked ChatGPT, actually, as you can see, so many questions that are related to Wikipedia. So, for example, explain to me step by step, how can I add a reference to an article? And its answer was actually so great. So we can, like, for example, um, this is a proposal, like a cooperation between Wiki Wikimedia Foundation and OpenAI Institute so that they can create something li like it's called WikiGPT. <laughs> this, is, this is from Florence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, WikiGBT in order to help the volunteers and address the issues that uh, the newcomers are suffering from. So example number six was covered in the lightning talk yesterday. So, um, 
So for the for people who didn't attend my lightning talk yesterday, sadly you will not be able to understand this graph. I want you to regret too much. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed.